In this video, we are going to be going over one tip for every agent that will help you master every role. In a game like Valorant, there are so many agents for you to learn and as a result, some things may go unnoticed. And that's why we're here to help, as we'll provide you with a must-know tip for each agent. Without further ado, let's jump right in. In the recent patch, Killjoy's mollies have now become even easier to see. The distance for you to see the mollies is now much larger, making many setups ineffective. To stop the enemy shooting out your mollies, a tip I recommend is that you start to put them behind walls or objects. For example, on Ascent, a common place for people to have their Killjoy mollies is on lane. However, most people would do a setup similar to this where they simply put the mollies in the open, making them very easy to shoot them. With something as simple as putting one behind this part of the boathouse in here on the floor, it makes it near impossible for the enemies to realize where the mollies are located without having some sort of first-hand experience. There has been a lot of hype in the past due to the discovery that you can use your sound circle to throw Viper lineups from anywhere. But the same can be done with Phoenix's Molly. When throwing it, the maximum distance it can go is 32 meters, which happens to be the same as the outer ring of the sound circle. So testing this in combination with the flash can prove to be insanely powerful. Have you ever asked yourself after a bad game, what am I missing? Or sought help from impatient friends? or browse desperately for answers that only bring up more questions? Your self-doubting days are over with Discovery, the first game-focused AI. Discovery is trained on the world's leading esports athletes to be your everyday personal coach. That's right, Discovery can help you improve your gameplay by giving you tips and strategies to take your game to the next level. Get started at ProGuides.com. Moving on to Brimstone, his ultimate can be very loud, and as a result of this, if you are near his ultimate, it is impossible to hear your footsteps or any utility that is thrown afterwards. A great tip is to reposition yourself after you or another Brimmy pops orbital strike to try and catch the enemies off guard from a different or an unexpected spot. Chamber recently received a lot of nerfs, most notably losing his second TP. In a way, this may seem like the end of an era, but for true Chamber mains, this is merely a small rework. Now that Chamber only has a singular TP, the range of that TP has dramatically increased. And with there being no height restriction, it allows for you to get very creative in where you place your TPs. Some examples include this beacon on Ascent, where you place it into this corner on Market, allowing you to go for a peek into B main. You can even use it to sit on logs to hide from any strong utility and get a sneaky pick on anyone running out. This one towards A short on Heaven allows you to peek A main safely, but it also gives you an opportunity to peek short. Although the long peek is easy and safe, be careful as you can get rushed by enemies on short. So make sure you have a teammate to protect you. And finally, this one under B site on Fracture allows you to be a lot more flexible, allowing you to help your team push site while also being able to quickly exit. This TP grants you the opportunity to get close to CT and even a little bit of Canteen. One thing I see a lot from Cypher players is that they both use their traps on the site that they are playing on. However, it is much better to put a trap in a choke point of the map to allow players to stack towards another site instead of them holding this angle unnecessarily. For example, on A site on Haven, most Cyphers like to play both traps on A site something similar to this. On the contrary, a much better setup like this, where they put a trap on B so the team can leave the site open, and that way they put an extra player towards C site or A site, whichever one is preferred. Although agents like Omen and Jet can get past this trap, the audible sound cue from the nearby players can alert the team. Fade is coming up next on our list, and as you probably know, her haunt has this super cool feature where you can hear it when it lands. Now, if your reveals keep getting shot, we've got a little trick for you. Instead of just tossing the reveal and crossing your fingers, why not team it up with an Omen or a KO flash? This way, the chances of your eye getting the info you need go way up. And if your reveal still gets shot right away, no worries, just switch things up and try another spot. Okay, so I've noticed a bunch of omen mains love to smoke the side entrance to stop a push. But then they get hit with all sorts of flashes, stuns, arrows, you name it. Here's a hot tip. Try dropping a smoke right onto the site instead of just blocking the main entrance. This makes enemies way more cautious when pushing in. And let's be so for real. Most teams will just ignore that entrance smoke if they're rushing. Now, if you smoke on site, you can actually hide in it and pick off any enemies that wander in. Plus, you might even get a chance to TP out after scoring a kill. Recently in a pro game, Boaster pulled off this move with Astra against Vitality on Seaside Haven. And you know what? This tip works for all smokes, not just omens. Think Brimstone, Viper, and of course Astra. Alright, let's talk about the newest kid on the Valorant block, Gecko. A bunch of Gecko players love using their wingman to plant the spike, and sure, that's cool and all, but guess what? You can make it even better. Treat your wingman like a boomba and let it clear some tight angles before your team dives into the site. The best part? You can grab wingman back and after just 10 seconds, he's already ready for round two. So clear those corners first and then go for the plant. It's way more effective than making your beloved wingman a spike exclusive ability. And hey, if you've already taken the space or your team is running low on players, planning with him is still a solid move. So next up is our buddy Harbor. Ever since he joined the Valorant squad, his pick rate and ranked has been kinda low. It seems like a lot of you don't think he's a solid solo controller option. 
And since controller is not exactly the most popular role, it means he doesn't see much playtime. But hey, if you do decide to give Harbor a spin, we've got a nice tip for you. When you're on the attacker's side during a pistol round, don't forget to grab his cove. It takes 17 shots with the ghost or classic bullets to destroy the cove. So with that being said, you'll have no problem getting that spike planted. Sure, it's a bit costly and you will have to pass on the ghost, but you can still rock a frenzy instead. And with a relatively free plant, that's not a bad trade-off, right? So let's talk about Breach. When I watch people play him, I see they're often unsure when to use his stun. Some choose to concuss the main entrances while others just randomly stun where they think a player might be. But hey, I've got an awesome tip for you Breach players out there. When the enemies are pushing a site, just hold your stun out fully and keep an eye on the minimap. If your teammates spot someone, direct your stun right where they saw the enemy and send that thing out. Trust me, it's a super effective way to give your opponents a headache and it'll certainly help your team get a free kill. The most important ability out of Jet's kit is her dash. It helps her get out of danger or aid her team by entering onto site. What most people don't know is that if you combine all three of Jet's abilities into one, it can make you an impossible target to hit. While entering onto Seaside Haven, putting a smoke on top of the main box and updraft dashing into it makes it harder for enemies to shoot you compared to just a standard dash onto the site. As seen in a pro match where Vitality's Twistin enters Seaside with a Breach Flash versus Fnatic on Haven. If you combine this with a teammate's utility like a Flash or an Arrow, it means you are set up to take the site much easier. Alright, so let me tell you, KO's ultimate is like crazy strong. It's seriously one of the most overpowered ults for wrecking your enemy's defenses. But here's the thing, a lot of people don't know the best time to use it on defense. You might think it's great for retakes, but you know what's even better? Popping it when the enemy ult gets activated. Imagine this, you hear the enemy raise announcing her party into sight, and then you just hit X like a boss, disabling their push, and then boom. Your teammate gets to stay alive a little bit longer and your rotation rolls in. Trust me, it's a game changer. Neon's overdrive ability is designed to help her quickly close the gap with enemies and engage them in close quarter combat. When activated, overdrive gives Neon a temporary speed boost, making her faster and more agile. Therefore, a key tip to make the most out of overdrive is that it's essential to always move while the ability is active. If you just stand still, you're wasting its potential. So if you're in a duel, spam AD, AD, AD like your life depends on it, cause it does. In game, of course. Although that being said, you still need to be careful not to overexpose yourself to too many angles. This is where I see a lot of Neons fail and end up dying alone. You might be fast, but you're not running alone and kill 5 people from 5 different angles fast. Still, try to be sensible. When playing Sage, especially now that she's back in the meta, it's vital to take space from enemies and deny them from retaking it. A lot of Sage mains think that their one and only job is to wall mid on split for example. But the truth is, you have to be adaptable. The split mid wall is either super strong or super weak. And whether in your game that's option 1 or 2 is not about how you place, but rather about when and why you do. If you just wall mid for the sake of just walling mid and therefore see it get broken in the first 10 seconds of each round, then you could have just gotten the same information with a much cheaper as well as refreshing sky flash. Even an early jump peek could give similar info. It might sound counterintuitive, but you should only wall mid if you notice enemies aren't going there. Why is that you might ask? Well, it allows for easy rotations and therefore makes your sight holds much stronger. But, and this is the key, if your opponents play differently and they're actually sending a lot of people mid, well then you have to do something else. Wall and be heaven or plop it down on one of the either mains. That way you can afford to pay more attention to where opponents are actually going. For Sova, his arrows can be used for more than just scouting. If the situation calls for it, they can also be used as reliable decoys to attack your enemies. If you're in a 1v1, try to send a low charge double bounce dart around the corner. Your arrow will swiftly hit the ground, bounce back up and repeat the process. When you do this, the strange trajectory of the arrow will catch enemies holding you off guard, allowing you to swing and quickly eliminate them. Sky's flash ability is a powerful tool that not only blinds enemies but also provides a great source of info. When used correctly, Sky's flash can reveal enemy positions, allowing her and her team to gain valuable information about the enemy's team strategy and positioning. Using an info flash is very easy and incredibly effective. Simply flash the part of the map you're concerned about and listen closely to find out if the enemies are in that area. Doing this often, particularly on defense, is a very good way to help with everyone's decision making as you can easily dictate where to put your resources. Hey Raze mains, listen up. Instead of chucking your grenade at the start of the round, dreaming of a wild ace or just scoring some chip damage, how about saving it for a retake? Trust me, most peeps won't expect a raise nade coming their way while they're holding their post plan angle, and it's way more likely that you'll score a kill. Just toss that nade into a common corner where enemies usually play and they'll be forced to either peek or get wrecked by your grenade. Back when she was introduced to the game, Astra stars were as easy to use as they were borderline broken. But nowadays, after many nerfs, she takes a little bit more knowledge to work them well. Generally speaking, it's best to employ just two stars during pre-round. Possibly work in tandem with your teammate's utility and then save the other two stars for reactionary purposes. For example, if they start rushing your site, then it's a great idea to put a suck down to delay the enemies to allow your team to rotate and help you. Alright, next up we've got Viper. 
I've noticed that a lot of people think that you need to be a total lineup Larry to use her. But guess what? You can still be a Viper God without knowing any. Instead of seeing your snake bites as a spike stalling tool, why not use them to clear common angles and really help your sight takes? In fact, if you're really insistent on studying, it's better to learn effective lineups for these kind of spots than it is to know four different post plant ones. Since Reyna has recently had her flash buffed, it has made her leer immediately blind anyone that has vision of it regardless of distance. This makes throwing it, well, all the more important, as it's harder to counter. So as a general tip, throw your flashes high where you expect to path towards. This way, it'll blind more angles and if your enemies try to shoot it, you'll know where they are and they'll have to hit a nice flick. Last but not least, we've got Yoru. And though this isn't often talked about, his ult is actually a massive counter to Viper's pit. Most of the time, Viper plays solo sight when they pop their ultimate. So all you gotta do is chat with your team and tell them to shoot your silhouette when you spot her hiding away in the clouds. And then boom, Viper's survival chances drop to nearly zero, and your team can waltz right into sight without breaking a sweat. So that wraps it up guys, I hope you found these tips helpful. And if you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. We appreciate you guys for watching and we will see you all in the next one.